Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome, my dear students of Senior One, a new biology session, talking in Unit Two, Chapter Three, differentiation of cells and diversity of plants and animal tissues. Differentiation of cells and diversity of plants and animal tissues. We have to know that there is organization in the living organisms. That the cell is a building unit. We know the cell is a building unit of the body of living organisms. The building and also the function unit. Because every biological process occurs in the cell. So the cell is a building and the function unit as we studied in the cell theory. But uh, a group of cells, what does they make when they organize together? They collect together to make something called the tissue. A group of cells make something called a tissue. And a group of tissues make something called an organ. A group of tissues make something called an organ. Like here we have the organ, the heart organ made of some muscular tissue and connective tissue. Uh, the organs together, many organs together make something we call a system. So the system or the organ system is made of many organs. When we are talking about the blood, the heart, the blood vessels, we are talking about the circular system. When we are talking about the stomach, the small intestine, the large intestine, the rectum, we are talking about the digestive system. When we are talking about the lungs, the trachea, the, the bronchi, and the nose, we are talking about the respiratory system. So the body is made up of many systems, and the system is made up of many organs, and the organ is made up of uh, many tissues, and finally the tissue is made up of uh, similar cells because they do the same function. They do the same function. So the system is made uh, the the tissue is made of a uh, made of many cells, identical cells. If we are talking about the plant tissues, we can see here an example of the plant tissue, which is a simple tissue found in the uh, plant called parenchyma tissue. We have three examples of simple tissue in the plant. Parenchyma tissue, colenchyma tissue, and sclerenchyma tissue. So, we have here the first tissue in the plant, simple tissue, which is called parenchyma tissue. Why we say it is simple tissue? Because it consists of one type of identical cell. It's made up of identical cells. So it is a simple tissue. Parenchyma tissue found in the plant, a living tissue, and it is a flexible, thin and flexible wall. It has a thin and flexible wall. And the cell has ellipsoidal shape. It is like a hexagonal shape or pentagonal shape or maybe uh, many sides like this or like a barrel shape. The cells have a barrel shape. And they have a thin wall characterized by having a thin wall and the large air spaces between the cells. Cells may be colored or green or colors. Parenchyma may be colored, green or colors. There are air spaces, aeration, to help in aeration between the cell of parenchyma tissue. Parenchyma cells contain more than one vacuole filled with water and the mineral salts. So the parenchyma tissue consists of many cells that have thin wall and have a uh, ellipsoidal uh, shape and we have a large air spaces between the cells. We have here large air spaces like this. This is a large air space here, a large air space here, 
a large air space here, many air spaces between the cells to store air to help in aeration. Large air spaces between the cells and the cell wall is a very thin. So it help in aeration and also maybe contain chloroplasts, uh, the, chlor the parenchyma tissue, if they contain chloroplast, so it help in photosynthesis process, help in making photosynthesis. If it doesn't have chloroplast, if it has leucoplasts, it, uh, it is used, the, the parenchyma tissue can be used for storage. Like the parenchyma tissue in the potato, which is used for st storage of starch. Storage of starch. So parenchyma tissue has many functions, like making photosynthesis process if they have chloroplasts, like storage nutrients such as starch, like potato, and resp responsible for aeration because it has large air spaces. The second tissue here we have the cholenchyma tissue. The cholenchyma tissue. It is different from parenchyma because the walls and the corners of the cells are thickened. The corners of the cells are thickened, not very thin wall, but they have thick thickening. They are irregularly thickened with cellulose. We have here large spaces, but they are thickened with cellulose, like this. We have some air spaces filled with cellulose, so the cell spaces, the spaces between cells thickened with cellulose, so it become more stronger than the parenchyma tissue. The corners of the cell uh, thickened with uh, cellulose. The function of it supporting and providing the plant suitable flexibility. So because it is stronger than parenchyma, it is used in supporting and uh, supporting uh, the plant and flexibility of the plant. So it, you can see it in the uh, some uh, cells like uh, the colenchyma. You can see uh, in in some uh, plants um, uh, stem in the, some plant stem. So they are elastic and help in a uh, flexibility of the plant and the elasticity. Number three, example of tissue, simple tissue. Number three, the third tissue, which is called sclerenchyma tissue. Sclerenchyma tissue is more stronger than colenchyma. Because there is many thickening here around the cell from every direction. The thickening from the every direction of the cell. It is a non-living tissue because the cell loses its cytoplasm and the nucleus. Thickened with a substance called lignin. Thickened with lignin. The cells are thickened with substance called lignin. This lignin make it very strong and make it a elastic. Function of the sclerenchyma to support the plant and give it flexibility and solidity. Give it uh, flexibility or solidity. You know, you can find the sclerenchyma tissue in some fruits, strong fruits like the pear, the kumisra, it could salva. Salaba di bisabab sclerin kaima tissue because it is thickened from every direction. The cells are thickened with lignin. It is a very strong thickening. After that, we have the complex tissue. The complex tissue made of many types of cells, different types of cells. So it's called complex. Not one type of cells, but many types of cells. We have complex tissue in the plant. We have two examples, xylem tissue and phloem tissue. The xylem and the phloem are the transport tissues in the plant. 
they transport we can call them also another name they are the vascular tissue in the plant مسؤول عن توصيل المواد transporting what transporting water and salts like the xylem the xylem tissue help in transporting water and salts from the root to the leaves to make photosynthesis and also it helps in supporting the plant what is the structure of the xylem tissue we have two types of vessels in xylem tissue xylem vessels and xylem tracheids vessels wider than tracheids it is a long tube formed when the walls between the cells disappear so if we have many cells over each other like this many cells over each other like this okay and these cells the wall between them disappear this longer tube of many cells over each other if the wall between the cells disappear like this like this like this like this now it you have a long tube a hollow tube and this is the xylem tissue a long tube or a vessel which uh, the cells lose its wall and lose its cytoplasm and lose its nucleus so it is a non-living tissue it is only a long tube there are tubes which consist of vertical rows of cells which lost the protoplasm and their horizontal walls are lost the horizontal row, row, uh, row is lost, so it become it becomes a, a long tube, hollow tube. So the lignin participate inside these cells, and a long void vessel is formed, which is a water and mineral salts can be transported. So it is a lignified tissue. Lignified tissue. The lignin here support the tissue from the wall. The lignin here in the wall, and you have a long tube. The water can rise up in this a uh, tube. The water can rise up from the root to the stem, then to the leaves. So the plant can use this water and mineral salts to make photosynthesis. Xylem tracheids is similar to xylem vessels, but they have indented end the end is uh, indented only the end here is indented like this like this and it is bitted it has many bits like xylem also has many bits the xylem wall also has many bits like this in the wall there is many bits in the wall of a the xylem tissue uh, tracheids and also xylem vessels but the xylem vessels wider than the tracheid. The xylem vessel wider than tracheid. The cells lost its protoplasm and the wall is thickened with lignin. The wall is thickened with lignin. As you see, it is thickened, so it is the help, it helps in supporting the plant and the help in transporting water and the mineral salts to the leaves. The second complex tissue which is a flow the flow tissue the flow tissue in the plant made up sieve cells formed vertically arranged cells which lose their nuclei and their cells separating between them become holes which are known as sieve plates what is the meaning of this you have here a tube, a tube like this, a tube of sieve tube is like this, and you have here many separating, many separating uh, wall between the cells. And this separating wall become pitted or hole. Many holes that has many holes. So it becomes similar 
to a sieve. It becomes similar to a sieve. It is be, it become like a sieve, or you can see many bits or many holes in the wall like this. So the cytoplasm can flow through this wall from uh, one cell to another. So, so we have many holes here, many holes in each, uh, many holes in each plate. It is called sieve a, a plate. And the long uh, tube is called sieve tube. So we have here many bits or many holes in the separating wall between the cells, which make it available to pass uh, the cytoplasm uh, through it from one cell to another. So the cytoplasm can flow from one cell to another until uh, it goes to every part of the cell of the plant. And we have also uh, this uh, sieve tube. Uh, also always accompanied with another cell called a companion cell. Companion cell. We have here a companion cell which has cytoplasm and has nucleus and has mitochondria. Uh, the companion cell is a live cell because it has cytoplasm. But the sieve tube, the cell that has, has no has no nuclei, so the, 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 the tissue, we can call the tissue, this compound tissue consists of sieve tube and companion cell. The companion cell contain nucleus and, and cytoplasm and mitochondria to give the, the sieve tube energy. The mitochondria is a source of energy. So the flowing tissue is considered as a live tissue, not a dead tissue like not a dead tissue like the xylem. The xylem is a dead tissue, but the phloem is a live tissue. The function of the phloem, the cytoplasm uh, permits the sieve plates in the form of cytoplasmic filaments. The cytoplasm flow here in the shape of filaments of cytoplasm can flow like this, the cytoplasm can flow like this from one cell to another through the holes between the separating wall between the cells. So you can trans the plant can transport the ready-made food in the leaves to all parts of the plant. There are some living cells near sieve, a tube known as companion cell. This is a companion cell here. The companion cell uh, provides the sieve tube with energy because it contain uh, mitochondria and it contain nucleus. It gave the energy to the, the sieve plate, uh, the sieve the tube, help in transporting cytoplasm. Function of the phloem tissue, it help in a transport the substance re resulted from photosynthesis process in the leaves to all parts of the plant, transporting the ready-made food by the leaves to all parts of the plant. So here we have companion cell and sieve a tube, and also we can see some parenchyma cells, some parenchyma cells. So we have companion cell contain nucleus, and sieve tube doesn't contain nucleus. But the, the xylem tissue is a dead tissue, but the phloem tissue is a live tissue. Why it is a live tissue? Because we have here cytoplasm and the nucleus in the companion cells. So we can't say the phloem is a dead tissue like the xylem. It is a, a live tissue. We can go now to animal tissues after finishing the plant tissues. We can go to animal tissue. When we're talking about the animal tissues, we have many types of tissue in the animal. We have many types of tissues in the animal. Number one, epithelial tissue. Number two, connective tissue. Number three, muscular tissue. Number four, nervous tissue. So we have four types of tissues in the animal. Four types of tissues in the animal. Epithelial tissue in the beginning, 
the tissue which cover the body from outside and the lining the inside cavities of the body cover the body from outside and the lining it from inside the assemble a squamous epithelial tissue composed of one layer of flat cells examples they are found in capillary lining and in the walls of the alveoli we can found this example of simple tissue epithelial tissue squamous epithelial tissue uh, found we can find it in the capillary lining and in the uh, in the wall of the alveoli in the lungs so it is a very thin wall tissue the simple squamous epithelial tissue the cells are cells are here are very thin like this cells are very thin like this the squamous tissue like this cells are very thin and they found in the lining of the air sac alveoli and in the capillary blood vessels capillary uh, blood vessels blood capillaries this is the simple squamous epithelial tissue like this and it is a very thin wall tissue a help in, in transporting substances like the in the air sac in the, the alveoli help in transporting oxygen and the carbon dioxide so it has a very thin wall and the next simple cuboidal epithelial tissue cuboidal means it's a cube shape it has a cube shape like this like this cube shape like this like this so it is thicker than the squamous tissue it is thicker than the squamous tissue and we found the cuboidal tissue in the kidney tubules we can found this tissue simple cuboidal tissue in the kidney tubules we can found it in the kidney tubules after that we have the columnar simple columnar epithelial tissue simple columnar the meaning of columnars the cells are elongated like this we have uh, thick they are more thick than the cuboidal cells they are more thick and they are columnar they are arranged like this and they have nuclei like this nucleus like this so they are and they have uh, long uh, they are elongated more than the cuboidal tissue and they are found in the lining of stomach and the small intestine they're found in the stomach and the small intestine so they are thicker than the cuboidal tissue this is the columnar epithelial tissue after that we have a complex tissue called stratified epithelial tissue stratified epithelial tissue why we call it a complex because it is made up of many layers the simple tissue like the epithelial uh, squamous and the epithelial cuboidal and the epithelial columnar made up of one layer only one row only of cells but we have here many layers of the cells so it is a stratified epithelial tissue it's arranged in many layers so we call it a complex tissue it's composed of many layers arranged above each other and the upper layer is a squamous the upper layer here squamous and there is many layers uh, below it there is many layers below it and this is the example of a stratified tissue skin your skin is a uh, complex stratified epithelial tissue why it is complex because we have many layers layer number one layer number two layer number three layer number four and so on it is a complex because it has many layers functions of the epithelial tissue they perform different functions according to their location the epithelial tissue do many functions but is the main function is covering the body from outside like the skin and lining the inside cavities of the body 
from uh, its function also absorbing water and digested food from the lining, like the example, the tissue lining, the small intestine, and protecting the body and the covering it from dry, protecting it from dryness and the harms like the skin, the complex stratified tissue in the skin protects the skin from harm of dryness and protect it from harm and secreting mucus to keep the cavity soft and moist such as in trachea and in the digestive canal we said that there is uh, an epithelial tissue in the trachea and in the small intestine and in the stomach it helps in aligning the inner body cavities the second type of tissues the second type of tissues is called connective tissue and the secret dome, connective tissue and the secret dome. The like that can epithelial tissue and the secret tloi. Connective tissue is made up of distant cells. The intercellular spaces between them are filled with a liquid, maybe semi solid and maybe solid substance. So the, the spaces between the cells filled with may, maybe a liquid and like in the blood. And filled with a semi solid substance like in the cartilage, and filled with a solid substance like in the bones. The connective tissue are classified according to the type of the intercellular material, according to the intercellular material. Number one, proper connective tissue. The seek dom awali. It's most common type of uh, the tissue that connective tissue it has a medium degree of solidity and the high flexibility ala daraja mutawassita min al salaba wa daraja aliya min al muruna it function connecting the tissues and different organs which is other yarbut al ada wa al ansiga bi ba'dha al ba'd like the tissue under the skin and the peritoneum membrane there's a small intestine membrane which holds a small intestine together. The peritoneum membrane is made of proper connective tissue. And the seagull peritone is the one that is the one that is the After that, we have another example of connective tissue, which is the skeletal connective tissue. The meaning of skeletal is found in the skeleton, in the bones and the curtain. It's a solid substance or semi-solid substance between the cells. Bones have calcium precipitated between the cells and also cartilage. The function of skeletal uh, connective tissue is supporting the body like the bones and the cartilage. Bones are different from cartilage because they have more precipitation of calcium. They are harder than the cartilage. The cartilage found in your body, like in the trachea, and like in the ear. Your ear pen is made of cartilage. And your nose, the front part of the nose is cartilage, and the back part of the nose is a bone. If you touch your front part of the nose, it is flexible more than the, the, the end part. The high part of the nose is very hard. Because it is made of bone. The front part of the nose is made of cartilage, so it is more flexible. Number three, vascular connective tissue. And the seeing abdominal wai. Vascular. So it is a liquid tissue like blood and lymph. Vascular tissue is a liquid tissue helping in transporting the digested food gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide and they help in excretion this is like blood and the limb the intercellular material is a liquid the, the, you know the blood has a plasma the plasma is a liquid of the blood and the blood is a liquid which transport digested food and also transport hormones that transport enzymes transport uh, also uh, the oxygen and the carbon dioxide Number three, muscular tissue. Muscular tissue and the seeing al-adali. Of course, the muscular tissue 
has the ability to contract and relax so you can move your body by the help of the muscular tissue and the sigil adali you are either connective tissue al adalat to tabar min al nasij al dam al nasij al dam connective tissue they enable the body uh, to move the living organism to move and there is three kinds of muscles we have three kinds of muscles the first kind, which is the smallest muscles, al adalat al malsa, or the iradiya, involuntary muscles and the non-striated, غير مخططة و لا إرادية, غير مخططة ولا إرادية تبقى موجودة هذا الشكل اللي نسيج العضل هنا اللا إرادي, the involuntary muscles. Involuntary muscle tissue. العضلات الملساء بسميها smooth muscles found like this, and uh, they are uh, nucleated. They have nucleus like this. These muscles are involuntary. They help in movement, but without your will. You move them without your will, like the muscles found in the urinary system and the digestive canal. The muscles in the digestive canal, the wall of the digestive canal, and the urinary system and the blood vessels are uh, small muscles or involuntary muscles or non striated muscles. They are small, non striated, and involuntary. Skeletal muscles, number two, we have. Skeletal muscles, العضلات الهيكلية, they are voluntary and striated. They are voluntary and striated. So here we have striated muscles, striated muscles like this, like this. Striated muscles we have here, striated muscles, long uh, striated muscles. They have long fibers. They are made of long fibers, the muscles that you can move by your will. The muscles that you can move with your will, like the muscles of your arm, the muscles of your leg, the muscles of your neck. And these muscles are striated. Striated muscles, they have long fibers. And these muscles, you move them by your will. Like your arm, you move your arm by your will. And you move your neck by your will. And you move your leg also by your will. So they are voluntary. Adalat iradiyya. Found in the muscles such as the hands, the legs, and the neck. Okay, the legs of your body. Number three, cardiac muscles. The third type of muscles, which are called cardiac muscles, al adalat al qalbiya, نوع خاص من العضلات موجود في القلب مختلف عن the skeletal muscles, the عضلات الإرادية وال smooth muscles, the عضلات الملساء. The cardiac muscles, al adalat al qalbiya, found only in the the heart. They composed of striated and the involuntary muscles. Striated. Like skeletal and the involuntary, like smooth, they are they are involuntary like smooth muscles, and they are striated muhatata like skeletal muscles. But the cardiac muscles found only in the wall of the heart, not in any other organ in the body. Cardiac muscles contain interskeleted discs, interskeleted discs between the muscles. These interskeleted discs help. And make the heart beat rhythmically. Help in the heart beat uh, by a, a special uh, heart beats. Rhythmically heart beats. It helps the heart They have uh, they attach it to the muscle fibers, the uh, interskeleted discs. And they make the heart to pump the blood regularly. They help the heart to pump the blood regularly. 
to cardiac muscles, the third type of the third type of a uh, muscular tissue. And the muscular tissue help in contraction and relaxation. They help you to move your body and your organs. Finally, we come to the last type of the tissues in the human and in the animal, which is the nervous tissue. And the Siegel Asabi. The nervous tissue is made up of units called the nerve cell or the neuron. The nerve cell or the neuron is a building unit of the nervous tissue. The neuron, as you see here, has a body and has an axon. Has a body and has an axon. A long axon extends maybe for one meter. So the longest cell in the body is the nerve cell. The longest cell in the body is the nerve cell. The body of the cell here has cytoplasm, nucleus, and it has dendrites. Dendrites are branches connected between a cell and another cell. And when they connect together, they make something called synapse. To, to send the messages from one cell to another, or from the brain to the body organs, or from the body organs to the brain. The axon is long and covered with a sheath called myelin sheath. And the axon ends with terminal, arborization or terminal nerve endings. The nerve endings are attached to the muscles. So there is nerve endings in your fingers, there is nerve endings in all of your body, uh, organs to allow the organ to move the nerve endings send the impulses from the brain from the cell body to the axon then to the terminals in the organs so you can move your hand by the help of the nerve impulses come from your brain the nerve tissue the nervous tissue responsible for regulating the different functions of the body organs because they receive sensory stimuli inside out the outside the body and send, send them to the brain the stuck bill al muthirat al muathirat from the surrounding environment there is a light the, the, the touching the, the five senses hearing sensation uh, touching hair, uh, vision and smell and so on send it to the brain and vice versa. Send the other organs from the brain to the organs to make the organ respond. So the nervous tissue responsible of sending and receiving messages between the, the brain and the body organs. We come here to the end of our uh, lesson and the end of our curriculum. Alhamdulillah, we have finished our curriculum today. Can solve some uh, questions quickly. Answer the following questions. The tissue which is resp responsible for storing nutrients in plants, parenchyma or sclerenchyma or colenchyma or flow. Who can answer? Which system responsible for storage, like in potato? Uh, which of them? Of course, it is. Parenchyma tissue. Okay, how are you, Rukaya? Uh, next question. Uh, cells, cell wall of colenchyma tissue, sacred with colenchyma Mr. tissue. Sorry, I will make it bigger. Is it now clear? Is it clear now? La Homzagalina. Ah, Tabanahara Suel, we only the only cell wall of colenchyma tissue cells are sacred with lignin or cellulose or chitin or glucose. The colenchyma sacred with a cellulose. Okay. 
the solid tissue is known as which is in the plant solid tissue what is the solid tissue in the plant is it sclerenchyma or colenchyma or epithelium or parenchyma it is what it is a sclerenchyma tissue the cell wall of sclerenchyma tissue is thickened with force lignin or cellulose or chitin or glucose of course the sclerenchyma thickened with lignin the tissue which is responsible for transporting water and salts from the root to the leaves from the root to the leaves the tarazylum or the phloem or the sclerenchyma or the parenchyma of course it is a xylem type the plant tissue which transport many nutrients from the leaves to all plant parts colenchyma or sclerenchyma or xylem or phloem ready made food in the leaves transported to all parts of the plant by the help of what tissue phloem tissue okay we'll stop here today it is enough today i hope you study the lesson very well and the next session will be the last session for us we'll make a revision and we solve the exam of uh, the embassy inshallah if you have any question prepare them for the next session inshallah Thank you and goodbye. Until we meet again, thank you and goodbye.